Guten Morgen, herzlich willkommen. Good morning and welcome to this doorstep with Parliamentary State Secretary Thomas Barreis, who is the Federal Government Commissioner for Tourism of the Federal Government. Today we have the European Tourism Forum. Mr. Barreis. participants from politics, the tourism sector, and other areas. We wanted to organize this event at Lake Constance. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, we had to reorganize and we are going to have this event online. The experts joining us from across Europe, from politics, science, etc., will focus on the topic of how we can overcome the crisis and how we can tackle the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Which concepts do we need for the future in order to emerge stronger from the crisis? Tourism is very important for Europe. 27 million people are working in the tourism sector and many countries, especially the countries bordering the Mediterranean, are depending on tourism. This is why we see that we have a strong responsibility here in politics to secure jobs and to create prospects for the future. We do want to make sure that travel in Europe is possible and it is important. We do not want that secure countries can no longer be seen as travel destinations. We want to create trust and we want to show that traveling will remain to be possible and important in the future. Today we are going to have many discussions. I am grateful that the European Commission is going to join us today. And I'm grateful that so many experts are going to join in. In the past months, we have achieved a lot together with tourism ministers from across the European Union. We have talked about many issues. But we have also started with the implementation of very specific topics. We have agreed on several issues. The member states have started to implement certain rules. We now have a traffic light system at European level for travel warnings. This, again, is an important tool in our travel strategy where we have green, orange, and red for the respective countries. Green is um, the point where we can still allow travel. However, when a country is classified as red, then this means that the infection rate is rising and that the criteria on site in the respective country uh, cannot be given for travel. And this is where we then issue a travel warning or we advise to issue a travel warning. And these criteria that we have issued in the European Union have been adopted by the majority of the member states and they now form an important base of the uh, travel uh, strategy. And this is also thanks to the concerted approach at European level. We have defined basic guidelines which we want to continue to coordinate at European level. Tests will, of course, be important for travelers. And in the coming weeks, there will remain a couple of issues that we will have to look at, for example, when it comes to test capacity, also to allow for transatlantic travel. So this is where we need to provide for further security and safety. I would also like to inform on a second issue, which is the topic of tourism strategies. In Germany, we want to talk about the issue of tourism and future prospects. During this legislative period, we want to uh, look at the points that are important for tourism in the coming years and decades. We are already a very successful uh, country when it comes to tourism. We are leading in the business travel sector. Most business travels go to Germany, and this is also a sign that um, we have been very successful 
be um, before the pandemic started. This is, of course, something that contributes to strengthening our entire economy as well. So we have discussed many points. We had six strategic discussions in the past three years. We are now in the final phase of discussions, and we now want to conclude the tourism strategy and present the tourism strategy at the beginning of next year. We, need, we are still trying to overcome the current crisis. However, we also want to show that we are now already trying to strengthen tourism and to make it fit for the future. So we want to make sure that this process of preparing the future of tourism is already integrated in this short-term crisis resolution process. People are now thinking about where they want to work, and of course the tourism sector does now seem very uncertain. This is why we have to make sure that we have enough skilled workers. Another important issue is digitalization in tourism. How can we make sure that we can travel safely in the future? I am convinced that it will become more important to people that traveling is safe and secure. This will be an important criteria regarding whether or not people will want to travel to a respective country. I think Europe has shown in the past weeks that we can provide for safe and secure travel and that health protection is of utmost importance. And this will help us in the coming years to revive the European tourism sector. However, as we know, we are still trying to overcome this current crisis. This is why I would like to say a couple of words regarding the current situation in the tourism sector. The tourism sector is hit particularly hard by the crisis. Many companies have had uh, drops in sales of 80 to 19 percent. We are very worried, and this means that this specific sector needs to uh, get a lot of support from politics. It is important that we revive the tourism sector, like many other sectors, but this might still take a bit of time, and this is why additional support will be needed. We need to create trust for the measures. This is an important point. We need trust in the measures that are implemented by politics. We need uniform, consistent measures. And if we look at the accommodation ban, for example, we've seen that we need to take decisions carefully and look at how they affect the people on site. It is important that we, as federal government, need to um, include the sector in our discussions on how we are going to tackle the pandemic. We cannot allow for a situation in which restaurants, hotels, etc., who try to implement hygiene measures lose their customers. Now we have to look into the situation together with the sector and see what can be done. A lot has been done already, and I think we can now say that traveling will be possible, but of course the of utmost importance is the uh, health protection. We need a regional approach, so we need uh, fast and strong measures. We need to look at implementation, and we need to allow for travel to regions that are not as badly hit by the crisis. We still have uh, the bridging aids, which provide for financial support. We need to make sure that the companies who are affected by the crisis, well, the companies need to be supported. And we have designed the uh, recovery packages in a way to recognize the specific challenges that the tourism sector is facing. When we look at restaurants and hotels, for example, we see that people feel uh, insecure if it comes to visiting these places. This is why we have to 
um, provide for measures that can allow for people to visit restaurants outside, for example, not in interior, in the interior, but also outside. Also, when the temperatures fall, we need to make sure that these measures are implemented because they can provide assistance to the restaurants hotels. This is another thing that was included in the bridging aid. Another important topic are the cost of costs for employees. We need to make sure that jobs are secured. We uh, looked in detail at, at what was still able to be done in restaurants and hotels. And we are now supporting companies also with regard to the costs that arise from keeping their employees in order to help them to survive the coming weeks. We need to provide outlooks for the future, a perspective. We need. We have already helped all the sector, uh, the entire sector. For example, we have. Uh, lower to the VAT for restaurants. This way we have provided for more liquidity of the sector. And I'm convinced that we have to take a, an approach that focuses on the long-term resolution of the crisis. So we have decided that the reduction of the VAT has to continue. It has, there has been a deadline until June 2021, but we need to lift this deadline in order to make sure that the restaurants, as soon as they can restart business, they will be able to create income so that the sector can focus on the future. This would be an important signal for the companies working in the sector and who wish to have a future. To conclude, traveling will remain to be important, not only for our economy, but for our society. People want to travel, want to see other countries, and this is important. We need to foster connections between the cultures, and we need to create a well-being, which is, of course, important in our today's world as well. And we have to make sure that we can provide for safe and secure travel, that we overcome the crisis, but that we emerge stronger from the crisis and to come back to the success story of Germany. We have done a lot in order to make sure that tourism can continue to be successful in the future. Thank you. A couple of questions from the chat, from DPA and Dow Jones students. The question is, you have said that tourism will require further aid until next year. How exactly is this aid going to be implemented? What kinds of volumes are we talking about? And when do you think the consultations will be finished? Well, we have a package of 50 billion euro of um, short-term aid. This is a package that is addressed at all sectors. Then we have the bridging aid that will be important until the end of the year. So there are still many funds available, although a lot of spending is being done. But this also means that there remains sufficient budget to continue the aids. I'm talking about 25 billion euros. So this means we do have the financial framework in order to provide for further assistance in the next year. The short-term aid is addressed at all sectors. We try to define criteria very clearly in order to make sure that all effective companies uh, can receive the assistance. We want to look and which companies are particularly effective. So I'm talking about a drop in sales of 50% in two consecutive months compared to the last year. So if a company has been particularly affected by the crisis, then we need to help. 
Other criteria are uh, related, for example, to uh, identifying the sectors that are facing particular challenges. And these criteria and her rules need to be very clear. To give an example, I talked about the support for export. This means that we want to offer state support and to grants to the affected companies. This is a clear signal to the restaurants that we do what we can in order to support them and to also provide for sector-specific assistance. So we need to build on the current measures and make sure that we find um, a vaccine, for example, to make sure that we can overcome the crisis next year. However, it will still take the, a bit of time, even if we uh, tackle the crisis successfully, until business can pick up. This means that we will need the financial assistance at least until the mid of next year. And then we have to reevaluate next year which further assistance must be provided or if the assistance needs to be prolonged. We need to send out signals, clear signals that make sure that we are focusing on the future. We need to create perspectives after these one or two years that we have lost. We need to provide for financial assistance and we also have to look at how we can improve the framework conditions. This will certainly also be an important part when it comes to the elections in Germany next year, and there will probably be very different proposals, but I believe that we need a long-term perspective for a very important sector. We need to tackle the crisis, of course, but we also have to create uh, future perspectives for the sector. Ms. Jarbeck. I would like to ask a follow-up question. So you, you mentioned that you will want to provide for opportunities to allow for restaurants to accommodate guests outside and for further assistance for the restaurants. Regarding Europe, you have praised the European system and you said that trust and predictability are very important. How can we then interpret uh, the um, reaction of Denmark, who decided from one day to the next to no longer allow for German travelers? How can we allow for predictability? Because these are very short-term measures. Well, thank you. Regarding your follow-up question, well, the bridging aid is an important basis for the companies because they need assistance to overcome the drop in sales through s support all provided by the state, which does not necessarily need to be refunded. So the companies can use these uh, funds to cover for the uh, current costs and to stabilize the situation, to find a basis for how they can overcome this crisis, but to have a successful start after we have all overcome the crisis. In addition, something that I would like to add, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that the companies and the employees want to work, they want to allow for travelers to visit. So we have to make sure that where travel is possible, that we make it possible. I do not agree with general travel warnings. I think we need to define a specific goal in politics to make sure that travel is possible where there is no uh, danger. I think this will create a trust. However, we do need a careful approach. We look at measures and we can not per se isolate certain regions and cut them off from travelers. The second point regarding the European approach 
In the past months, we have done a lot at European level. We have talked a lot among European colleagues and also with neighboring states. So Germany's neighbors, for example, Poland, Austria, France, Denmark, ne the Netherlands, which are very important travel destinations for us. So we are trying to have a coordinated approach. I've heard from the land Schleswig-Holstein that it is very difficult for the companies that are established there, that many travelers are not able to reach this travel destination. So. It is important that guests from Europe, but to realize that guests from Europe were an important business factor in Germany. This is why it is uh, very difficult for certain regions who can no longer accommodate guests. So I ask all of us to be very careful. Of course, we need to take security and safety into account. This is of utmost priority. But at European level, we have agreed that all these measures need to be proportionate. So this is something that I would also like to address to Denmark. Thank you, Mr. Barreis. Thank you to all our participants. And I. Now I look forward to a wonderful tourism forum. Thank you.